Hey guys, Abyssal Expedition is back, and this time with leaderboards and other stuff, if you're into that sort of thing. Regardless of whether you're going for a top leaderboard spot or just going for prints, uh, here's hopefully some tips to help you out. For starters, make sure you get into the event as soon as possible. It always starts 24 hours after the matchmaking period um, begins, and that is right at server reset time. This is because any essence that you gain in the beginning time gets accumulated. This time food doesn't start regenerating for a few hours, so it's not as beneficial, but it is still better to join as soon as possible. Also note that the relics are still tougher this time, so you will not be able to take potentially as high of territories as you were able to right off the bat uh, two expeditions ago. Definitely try to conserve food as much as possible in the beginning and get as many of those 20 tiles filled in as possible so that you can be ready to take five more tiles when you rank up, uh, which can happen within the time before food starts regenerating. So you definitely want to be able to take the five more tiles right when you're able to. If you are wondering whether having spectators or not is more beneficial to your team, uh, the answer is both are beneficial, so it is technically slightly better to have no spectators as long as your whole guild is about even in participation. If you have people that won't participate as much, having them go spectator is more beneficial to the group. But realistically, it's a very small difference, so use the spectator slots if you need to, and don't if you don't. When choosing your path, it really doesn't matter that much this time. There's three options. Um, realistically, the bottom left and bottom right are quite similar. The top is probably the easiest path. I might suggest placing your players that typically lead the events in the top path so that they can carry through the bosses faster for everyone else. Um, all of the bosses share HP, so the second boss, Eluard, is easier, and then it's also the closest path to get to um, the Odin boss, the third boss, and which is definitely the easiest third boss as well. So for the third boss, you will want to have everyone path to Odin and go through him to get to the final boss, and like the past you will use one hero at a time, usually a celerity hero, um, to take down Odin. In the past, only certain heroes were actually effective at doing boss damage, final boss damage. Um, this time, as long as you select the right heroes, um, most of your heroes can be pretty useful in dealing boss damage, so you really want to be as uh, efficient with food as possible. The best hero type for progression again will be your celerity heroes as has always been the case and this time you do get a relic soul which you can apply your top relic to a, another hero um, one hero per team so you are free to bring in your OP Ains or maybe even your chicken if you want to do the five pull with Iron. Um, you have a little bit of freedom in selecting there and this makes um, just the entire progression process a lot easier. For hero choice, I would select your um, your top team in the very beginning. Um, use up all their food, sub them out for the second slots, and then place your top team in again. Probably your Ains team. I think that does the best in taking territories in the beginning. And then after that, start filling in celerity heroes uh, once they run out of food. I would select up to two non-celerity heroes to be used in those teams with a relic soul when you're able to get it at Viscount, which realistically could be within the first day easily. So for your third set of five heroes, either your third or fourth set of five heroes, I would suggest placing your best boss team in so that they can generate food the duration of the event and just don't touch them for anything. Just save them for the boss, um, just so you can do as many high damage attacks as possible. Then your fourth team you can place in five more celerity heroes, just so that you are 
really able to be as aggressive as possible when taking territories. Maybe these ones can be more damage focused than the previous ones. And then your fifth team can be your secondary boss team. So when selecting your boss team, you are definitely somewhat limited. The top boss team almost guaranteed will require a a strong Grez, Grez hole. You'll need Twins and Mortis. So Twins and Mortis can both be E+, and still work relatively well for this. You have a little bit of leeway in your top DPS for this team. You can go with Lucretia, who seems to be the most, uh, the most reliable in this role. There are also some comps utilizing Antandra, dealing a lot of damage, or Raku, dealing a lot of damage. For the Lucretia team, she actually does the best on a 5.5 relic, so if you're able to attack the boss before you buy the highly defensive Celerity relic, you're looking at ballpark 200 million more damage, uh, obviously depending on your actual heroes. But, However, when you get into the using solo heroes, you'll want the max relic um, for those. And then for that third support role, it seemed to be best if you selected Hodgkin. Other comps I saw did well with Estrilda or Rain, Silas or Rowan. Then for a secondary boss damage team, I would suggest going with something including... Raku, if you didn't use him in the first team, Saurus, and then your alternative supports that you didn't use in your primary team. So maybe a Silas or Rain. Um, you'll probably want to use your Cecilia here, and then maybe Laika or Rowan as well. After this, it becomes more beneficial to use small teams because you want to really get the highest DPS possible. DPS being a new term to the gaming world I just made up is damage per stamina. A top duo team that I would suggest using if you haven't used the heroes already would be Drez and Silas. Really most of the other heroes do best solo from this point on. So when you look at heroes by themselves, you'll probably have them on a maxed out relic and they'll do best. So for solo heroes, there are a number of them that will do over 100 million damage each. Just to list some off, um, Zeke seems to be the best, and then Thane, Satrana, um, Drez, etc, etc. Um, you can kind of see how this list goes down. This is a compilation of a larger damage um, sheet and then some of my own values and then some of my friends values. So in order to hit the 130 million damage mark for the Duke rank, you'll want to look for 37 stacks next to the boss's life at the top. And for the Prince rank, for the 280 million damage, you want to look for 78 stacks. When helping out fellow militia mates, considering um, how useful food is and how important food is in this event, in this particular season, I would suggest making sure that you can kill the entire opponent teams rather than just dropping them and leaving them weaker. Um, you'll want to regenerate as much food as possible from stars at, after battles and I would also suggest only going for one large city each as their um, payout is not um, worthy of the effort it is to take on multiple of them. If you haven't already seen my video uh, describing this event more um, or if you didn't participate in the beta version of this event, you should um, check out this top video here. And if you have never participated in a 
Abyssal Expedition, or maybe you are looking for more tips, um, you can check out this bottom video that goes over tips that carry season to season. Thank you for watching, and good luck this season. See ya.